Hi, I'm Shelley. I'm the Communications Director at the Natural Resources Foundation of Wisconsin, and I am going to make a pollinator garden today in my yard. I am not a pollinator expert, nor am I a big gardener, but I have been doing a lot of reading over the last few months, and I've been grilling all my coworkers at NRF who know a lot more about pollinators than I do, and I think I have a good idea of what I need to do in order to create a pollinator garden. My yard is almost 100% grass, and I'd like to change that. I currently have no pollinator plants, no native plants in my yard whatsoever, so I gotta start somewhere. I hope watching me, a beginner, tackle something like this will inspire you to do something to take action as well to help pollinators. Even if you don't know the perfect way to do it, it's better to get out there and give it a try. So I'm ready to dive in and get started following these five steps for planting a pollinator garden here in Wisconsin. Okay, so step one is pick your pollinator plants. There are a lot of different species to choose from and it can be kind of overwhelming. So I do have a list of staff picks from my coworkers, which I'll put on the screen here. One of the things to consider when picking your plants is, is your site full sun, part sun, or shade? My site is full sun. And actually, let me show it to you right now. There are no trees other than the spindly little tree here, so this is definitely a full sun site. Also keep in mind that pollinators avoid areas that are very windy. You also want to check the soil and see if it's sandy, that's draining water really well, or if it's more thick and clay soil. There are a lot of resources about how to plant pollinator gardens, about pollinators in general, and where to buy native plants that we have put into the description box of this video in case you want more info. Just quickly, why am I choosing native plants? Native plants are pretty low maintenance once they're established and they are important host plants for many of our butterflies and moths and other pollinators. So I'm going to be going to a local nursery to ask a few questions of the people who work there and maybe pick up a couple plants. And here are the plants that I chose from the local nursery. Prairie Smoke. I also am making an online order from a nursery that's about a half hour away from where I live. The plants that I ordered are Black Eyed Susan, Purple Cone Flower, Rattlesnake Master, Wild Bergamot, and a couple Pasque Flowers. The next step is to prepare the site. And you do that a little differently based on whether you're planting seeds or plugs, also known as plant starts. If you're planting seeds, plant them in the fall or early winter. Winter freezing and the spring rains will help the seeds germinate. I am planting in May, early May, so I'm going to use plant starts. Move any existing plant cover and that includes grass, so I'm going to get started on that now. I made a very lazy attempt to kill the grass late last fall by piling a bunch of leaves on it, but the grass is very strong and is poking through. If you're digging, be sure to call Digger's Hotline first, which is free, so they can mark any underground lines in your yard. Okay, it's a few days later and it's time for the next step, which is to plant your plants. Remember to plant your plants in clusters, which helps the pollinators find the plants. The ones I got from White Pelican Farm came in these nice little biodegradable bags that can be planted directly in the soil. But if your plants came in little plastic pots, those have to be removed before you plant them.
Now that my garden is planted, we're on to step four, which is to take care of your plants. Make sure they don't dry out and weed in between the plants. Because they're native species, next year they won't take as much care as they do in the first season. Make sure not to use any pesticides on your pollinator garden at all. You can physically pull out weeds between the plants, or like me, you can use bark mulch in between the plants while they're small. If you live in the city of Madison, Wisconsin, like I do, you can actually get free mulch from the city brush processing center. If you're in a different part of Wisconsin, your area might have a similar program. And keep in mind that some weeds, like dandelions or clover, are actually used by pollinators too, so you might choose to leave those. Alright, the last step is the easiest step, which is to do nothing. When winter comes, don't remove dead plants when you're cleaning up your yard. The seeds and plant matter will improve your patch next summer and provide food and places for insects and small wildlife to hide over the winter. And if you live in an apartment or you don't have a patch of dirt to work with, there's other ways that you can help pollinators here in Wisconsin. Apartment dwellers can choose native species or other plants that pollinators like to plant in window boxes or planters on their balcony or patios. Some perennials, like these black-eyed Susans, might even make it through the winter and come back next year. The larger the container, the more likely the perennial plant will come back next year. And that's it. Those are the five steps for creating a pollinator garden here in Wisconsin. Thank you so much for watching. And again, check out the extra resources in the description box below.